Hey, hello challengers! Today we're going to see the difference between abstract classes and interfaces in a Java code challenge. So let's see the code then. So this is the Java code challenge and as you can see we have the interface zombie and the abstract class nemesis. Notice that the abstract class nemesis is implementing zombie and we also have a variable shoots here in the abstract class and also notice that in the interface zombie we have a lambda expression and an abstract method shoot and here in the main method notice that we are doing a couple of operations with the interface zombie and the abstract class nemesis so what i want you to do now is to stop this video and try out this java code challenge by yourself and then i'm gonna give you the explanation okay so stop the video now Okay, so now that you try to solve this Java code challenge on your own, let's see the answer. So the answer is the following, and I'm going to explain why it's this answer. The first thing to notice here is that we are using a lambda expression, and we are just declaring the lambda expression here. We are not actually invoking it. Therefore, this variable won't be incremented at this point. So that's why when we print nemesis race, we're going to have the number zero here. In the following line of code, we are using the abstract class nemesis. And notice that we cannot instantiate either an interface or an abstract class. So in this case here, notice that we are not actually instantiating a class directly, but we are using actually an anonymous inner class. So this means that we are using an unnamed class here and we are actually overriding the shoot method here. Another important thing to notice is that in an abstract class, you can change a variable value, which in an interface, you can never change a variable value. In an interface, you can only use constants values, uh, which means that implicitly every interface variable you declare are always static and final. Here we are doing that, we are using this anonymous inner class concept, so we are not really instantiating the abstract class, but we are instantiating any unnamed class that the compiler will generate, and then we are overriding the shoot method, and then notice that in the zombie interface we are using the zombie variable here and we are invoking the shoot method. And in this shoot method, we are basically just invoking this system out print ln and it's just printing stars. We can declare variables in an interface, but notice that this field is actually public static, but this is redundant. You can see here that the modifier static is redundant for an interface and the public modifier is the same. So as you can see, we can have any kind of variable in an interface, but you can't change the value, which means that when you give the value to this variable, it will be always the same. So that's why it's going to print stars. Notice here that in this zombie variable, we are overriding the shoot method with the following lambda and as we are using the post increment operator we're gonna print zero here again but notice also that after the execution of this line of code the number one will be present in this nemesis rates i'm gonna show you soon when i debug this code that this will happen then we invoke the shoot method from the abstract class and notice that once we implement this zombie interface in this Nemesis class, we are able to override the shoot method. And this is exactly what we are doing here. We are overriding the shoot method and we are also changing the value of shoots and reinforcing here the main difference between an interface and abstract class is exactly that. In abstract class, 
you can have mutable instance fields, which in an interface, you can't have that. In an interface, you can only have public stack final variables. So this is the main difference between abstract classes and interfaces. And of course, uh, the other very important difference is that in an abstract class, you can use constructors. Okay, so here we changed the value of shoot to 23. Therefore, when we invoke this method, the, the value of shoots will be 23. And then in the end here, when we print shoots and nemesis raids, it's gonna print 23 and one. So let's debug this code and see it in detail. Let's go here. Notice that when we pass through this lambda, the value is still zero. Why? It's because we just declared this lambda. So here we're gonna print zero, as you can see. And here we're just declaring the shoot method in this, in this abstract class. Here we just printed the value from stars here. And then we're gonna invoke this lambda expression, which is, is still zero because we are using the post increment operator. So, which means that after the execution of this line, then this variable will be incremented. Here you can see that we already changed the value of shoots to 23 and the nemesis rates is equal to one. So that's why the output of this challenge is this one. So in interfaces, you can have private methods. So you could have that and this will compile fine. You can also have static methods. Uh, test two, I can show you public stack void. As you can see here, we don't need to put public because it's redundant. So if we do that, this method will be public. And we also have the default methods. So that helped a lot to implement all the ecosystem of lambdas and streams in Java 8. So it's a very useful possibility in interfaces. And that doesn't mean it's the same as an abstract class, because like I said before, we can't have mutable state in an interface, which means that if we do that, for example, int i equals to five, we can't get this variable and change it here, for example, because this is always public, static, final. That's why that's the main difference between interfaces and abstract classes. And of course, in abstract class, you can use a constructor and in an interface, you can't do that. So that's pretty much it for this Java code challenge. And the main point to remember is that abstract classes can have mutable state. Uh, abstract classes can also have constructors. And the only limitation from abstract class uh, other than uh, a normal class is that uh, abstract class can't be instantiated, which means that it has to be always a parent class, okay? And interfaces, on the other hand, are meant to be a contract of a code. And even though it can have default methods, it can't hold a state like abstract classes. And interfaces can't also have constructors. So those are the main differences between interfaces and abstract classes, which in a object-oriented programming point of view, it's a huge difference and use them wisely. How can you learn more about those uh, very important concepts? You can take a look at the JDK code. You can see many, many examples in JDK code. You can see the list interface, you can see the set and the map interfaces and notice that you can easily use polymorphism with those interfaces. And you can notice that if you go in the collections code, you're gonna notice that you don't only have interfaces, but you have abstract classes. And notice that the abstract class will be always a parent class. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense because you can't really instantiate an abstract class. So keep those points in mind. Thanks a lot for watching this Java Code Challenge. Uh, give a like to this video and get subscribed to this channel for more Java Code Challenge and keep breaking your limits.